Hi all, I have another very interesting game to show you today, Leela against Komodo, the Monte Carlo version. So the tree search is actually the same as Leela's, Monte Carlo tree search. Very, very interesting developments in computer chess generally. So uh, d4 from Leela, we have d5, c4, e6, knight c3, c5, c takes d5, this is the Tarish defense, knight f3, knight c6. Now here d takes c5. More common uh, is the g3, which I believe Rubenstein might have introduced. And this is thought to be quite nice for white, although technically engines seem to think it's just about equal. This kind of plan seems quite intuitive and interesting. Uh, but here we have d takes c5. Now bishop takes c5 was played. d4 has been seen before in high level games. For example, watch Zik against Miranda. There's a high level game in 2014 which ended in a win uh, for White. Uh, the start position was here and it carried on. Eventually it was winning for White. Uh, but uh, okay, in this game we have Bishop takes c5, Queen takes d5, and this continuation, of course, has been seen before, as you might expect. Uh, Queen e4 check was played here with Leela playing white but uh, in a, another high level game e3 was played uh, which ended in draw smilt against uh, Kovaletskia in Belgrade 2013 e3 uh, so interesting queen e4 check we have bishop e6 and now e3 here so the queen does seem to be a target for gaining tempos Knight f6, another tempo gain, queen c2. So it does seem a little bit pr provocative, but white has got that extra pawn. How dangerous and effectual will this extra pawn be? Look at all of black's pieces. They seem to be very, very aggressive. There's, there's threats of knight b4, potentially sometimes. The bishop seems active. Black has got a lot of piece activity for the pawn. And in fact, g6 is played, which gives the idea that maybe even bishop f5 is going to be handy. <clears throat> soon bishop e2 both sides castle now actually knight b4 and the queen goes to d1 here yeah it's looking a little bit tactically scary to put the queen on b1 in the light of potential things like bishop f5 so queen d1 holding the fort rook fd8 bishop d2 now that is going into a self pin but black doesn't seem to have enough pressure to really exploit this here bishop e7 and now knight d4 once that bishop has retreated away from the d4 square yeah the knight's pounced in hitting the bishop now knight bd5 bishop f3 knight takes bishop takes bishop c4 rook e1 and you'll see that because black hasn't got pawns on c5 or e7 it makes this d4 knight there's no pawn to kick this knight this knight is really quite a magnificent uh piece here in the center at the moment we see knight d5 as if black's interested in you know some structural damage but leader prevents that with bishop takes d5 uh on rook c1 as an example this looks sorry knight rook c1 knight takes bit of structural damage here uh, and this this is the variation which uh, leads a, it see it seems white might technically have a small edge but it looks nicer just to do what Leela did to avoid this which is just to snap off that knight give up the bishop pair voluntarily and from a structural perspective at least look at white's pawn chain it's very very neat with that nice extra pawn on e3 still h3 rook a c8 a3 queen c7 and now this pawn is pushed this one extra pawn is it going to make any difference here well we see actually now a very aggressive move queen g4 which has sometimes the possibility of knight f5 being really annoying for black just to show you how annoying because black actually thought it was so annoying perhaps that the nudge move h5 was played hitting the queen but I'll, I'll just to demonstrate a6 knight f5 let's say b5 for sake of argument uh, then bishop a5 and the queen is overloaded here 
if you look uh, this is just nasty uh, so for example here is a, a tactical disaster now that's bad play of course but uh, let's let's see after knight f5 let's say king f8 then taking on e7 is, is a strong idea with bishop b4 so another sort of form of tactical disaster so there are some interesting implications of trying to win that bishop with this bishop menacing on sometimes this diagonal as well as this diagonal so very very interesting uh, knight f5 how powerful it is here so h5 queen f3 and then bishop d6 was played and this gets a little bit tactical now white's play what would you play in this position okay Leela actually played e5 you might think e5 giving up the pawn so quickly the bishop actually just retreated on bishop takes e5 rook takes and then we have knight c6 so hitting the queen with the bishop and knight and say queen d6 we can take here and actually get this pawn and this is a small edge for white even though it's opposite color bishops white has a dominating position here and these weakened dark squares around the king I think give white good winning prospects as well as here controlling the e-file white's king is much safer and there's no major holes there compared to black's king and if we look at this line again uh, so this this combination to win back the exchange if the queen had gone here instead not to lose b7 then queen f6 and there's a world of pain on this diagonal setup so these these key squares for example here chatmate so very interesting yeah if this is taken maybe more interesting for white if that's taken so we have bishop e7 and the pawn really is something battering into black's king safety now with e6 that one extra pawn is making a big difference here so a very dangerous position for black here white is now threatening queen takes f7 check black has to address that somehow black actually played bishop g5 so indirectly defending f7 with the queen and the bishop does seem to be on a reasonably active diagonal uh, let's have a look at an alternative if bishop takes then there is structural damage after knight takes rook takes this is looking too dangerous black's king safety seemed a bit shot to pieces here and white's got a big advantage and the same thing here with f takes knight takes forks queen and rook so i mean black's really compelled to take here i think we arrive at the same situation if we follow this through for a moment uh, for example queen e4 here this is just too much for black to bear so yeah very dangerous so bishop g5 trying to defend but now very powerful move rook e5 so hitting that bishop what does black want to do well black played f6 here uh, if the bishop drops back then of course we can take on f7 check and then rook takes h5 is uh, crushing absolutely mating uh, for example yeah knight f5 and then mating after so if bishop h6 here now there's a beautiful shot in this position i wonder if you can spot it if i give you five seconds a wonderful tactical shot rook takes h5 is possible with knight f5 and the coordination is immense of white's attacking pieces for example here bishop f6 and then knight e7 check and then the queen is going to come in for the kill that's check and yeah the queen knight and bishop coordinate really well here check rook d1 yeah it's just it's just too much attacking potential here against black this is an example continuation which is really good for white uh, so not too many options so f6 was played and Leela plays another, uh, and a very nice move rook takes g5 exchange sacrifice kind of temporary because after queen f6 there's such menacing threats here like knight f5 and we've got the battery established so that h8 is sensitive the pawn is taking away a key escape square of the black king here and we're threatening to deliver queen h5 quite queen f6 to h8 chat mate once the knight moves supported by the bishop so black plays queen g7 and remember we've got opposite color bishops here and you might think well hold on before we get into that just to concretely put that on the board 
So knight f5, threatening queen h8, so king h7, knight e7 interrupts that threatening queen g7. Here, check, this is a devastating continuation. And white could either take the queen off or even go for a checkmate here with this. It's just mating, basically. Uh, so yeah, black is kind of compelled to go into this end game. And you might think, well, it's opposite color bishops, right? So we have knight c6 check, winning back the exchange. And now e7, a very powerful pawn on the seventh rank, in theory. But can it be blockaded? g4, black's pawns are vulnerable on light squares at the moment. So coming in for rook d8 here, it looks very powerful. Or at least it will cause black to have to be on the defensive. Bishop b5, protecting the rook in advance. Bishop g5, getting out of the tempo gainer in advance of king f7. Now this pawn here is slightly vulnerable. You can imagine the king wanting to step out and attack this pawn. King f7, we have king h2, check, king g3, rook h5. And now it's two, uh, white can't play king takes g4. You might question for a moment because of bishop e2 check. That's a nasty shock and winning the rook. So we have actually the delayed king f4. We have rook h2, rook d8. And this threatens rook f8 check followed by e8. So if rook takes g2 here, rook f8 check kicks the king out and then we can play e8 winning the bishop. So black has to do something about this. So we have actually bishop e8 and now king g3, rook h1. And it is possible here to play king takes g4 with a big advantage. But actually, rook d4 was preferred. King e6. Uh, if rook b1, you might be uh, wondering to hit this pawn. Actually, white can play rook b4 here, and after b5, then take the pawn with the king. So that's a nice advantage. So uh, king e6 was played instead. Uh, king takes g4. So even though it's opposite color bishops, it's very difficult for black, this position. It is, uh, we've got three, four, five. It is two pawns down. And that pawn on e7 really is dangerous. So rook f4 here, rook g1, g3. We have king h4, check. Some shuffling, high level shuffling. Rook f8, king steps back. Bishop f6, which makes way potentially for the king to come in on dark squares. That's stopped. King goes back. g4. We have king g3 now. And now the king goes this way into the position, potentially. So rook g8 now. King goes back. Yep, some high level shuffling. F5 here. G takes, G takes. White is about to get potentially connected. Past pawns protecting each other. Uh, now rook h8 here. The bishop is nicely protecting b2. Comes back to c3. And in fact here, that lets go of the e7 pawn. You might be wondering, why is that? Well, after the check here, this is very strong as well, after rook takes b7. So here, rook d6, rook a7, rook on the 7th, taking this pawn, so three pawns up now. And these two pawns are just, yeah, it looks as though black really can't blockade this position, even though it's opposite color bishops. It's going downhill here rather rapidly so let's see how it finished carries on check that wins that bishop yeah it's all over now by the shouting rook a offering the rook even <laughs> Leela trolling a little bit <laughs> if rook takes a8 then just b7 and queening and that's enough to win from there the f ball is queening after the rook takes so black uh yeah avoided that but this is queening anyway, so uh, now it's just, it's all over. The queen was given up, a yeah. bit of amusement to get a perfect table base, known position, <laughs> bishop given up as well. Yeah. Okay, and then we're on the road to checkmating, eventually, with the rook and the king. So another interesting, instructive game from Leela there. So the extra pawn, she seems to be able to weather the storms in the opening, seen this time and time again. And eventually, the extra pawn somehow 
magically reactivate. Sometimes it's when she does an attack on the king's side. We've had some Banco Gamma examples where the pawns later become important after a preliminary attack. But yeah, if the threats are not lethal from the gambit, it seems as though Lila is actually pretty strong at playing against these kind of gambits openings as as was evidenced in this particular game hope you enjoyed it and if you did like this uh, video uh, then you should see a, a box appearing top left for my site chessmold.net i hope you might consider becoming a member there to play against other youtubers and also i put analysis in advance on the improved menu learn from the masters for these videos so you can see all the analysis in advance of videos and all past the analysis as well okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much